In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve higher order linear homogeneous differential equations. So let's take a look at our first example. So here is our first example. We want to find the general solution of this differential equation. So it is a third order homogeneous and it's linear. So let's go ahead and write down its characteristic polynomial. So assuming the solution form, it's going to be y equals e to the rt. So we're trying to find the roots to this um, differential equation. So we have the characteristic polynomial as r cubed minus 5r squared plus 2r minus 10 equals to zero. And then we can try to see if we can factor this or you can use any other technique that you're comfortable finding roots of a polynomial equation. So it looks like this one is factorable. So I can factor them by using the method of grouping. So from the first two, I can pull out their common factor, which is r squared. So we have r minus five. From the last two, we can pull out a positive two. Then we have r minus five equals to zero. And then again, both terms have r minus five in common. So we can pull out r minus five. Then we have r squared plus two equals to zero. Okay, so now we can set each one of them equal to zero. So if I set r minus five equal to zero, we will have one of the roots. So let's call it r1, that's going to be five. So we have one real root. And then if I set the second one equal to zero, r squared plus two equals to zero. Well, that gives me r squared is equal to negative two. And then when I take the square root, I get a complex root. So we have r uh, two and r three, it's going to be plus and minus a square root of two i. So complex roots are conjugate pairs. So we have two of them plus and minus two i. So let's call them r two and r three. So there you go, we have three roots to this polynomial. So we have one real root and two complex roots. So the solution of this equation is going to be, so our general solution is y of t is equal to c1 e to the 5t plus any complex roots, alpha is zero and beta is a square root of two. So you can think of this as zero plus and minus square root of two i. So we have c2 um, cosine of a square root of two t plus C3 sine of a square root of two T. So there you have your general solution to the higher order. Okay, now let's take a look at another example. So here's our second example. So we're again trying to find the general solution of this higher order differential equation and it's homogeneous. So we have, um, to write out its characteristic polynomial first. So again, assuming that solution form is e to the rt, so we're going to have the following characteristic. So we have r to the sixth power minus r to the fifth power minus 20 r to the fourth equals to zero. And it looks like this is also factorable, so I can pull out the GCF, which is r to the four, so we're left with r squared minus r, so we have minus r minus 20 is equal to zero. And then I can factor this a little bit more. So we have r minus five and r plus four. These are the factors and we still have r to the fourth equals to zero. And now we set each one of them to zero. So we have so here, if you set this one zero, you get four roots, but they're repeated. So we actually just get one, but this is repeated four times. So we will take care of that when we write out the solution, we make all of them independent by multiplying by t to some power. And then this one, when I set it to zero, I get r is equal to five. So if four roots are coming up from r equals zero, I can call this r to r, r fifth. 
And then the sixth root is going to come from here, call it R6, which will be negative 4. So there we have 6 root to this differential equation. Now we can go ahead and write out the solution to this. So our solution, it's going to be y of t. So first, let's write down the solution with r equals 0. So we have c times e to the 0 times t. And of course, we know that's just e to the 0, which is 1. So we can just say that's a constant term. And then we have the second one also, another constant times e to the 0, again, another constant. So we can just say c2. But to make that independent from this one, we would have to multiply this one by a function t. So that gives us two of them. And then for the third one, again, it's e to the 0, which is 1. Now to make that one independent from both of these, we would have to multiply it by t to some power. So the next power we're going to go to is t squared to make them independent from the first and the second. We need one more for the 0, r equals 0. So that's c4. And then to make that one independent from the previous three, we would do t to the third power. So now they're all independent and the root is r equals 0. Okay, now for the last two, we have the real roots. So we have uh, R5 is 5, so that would be C5 e to the 5t. And then C6, it's going to be e to the negative 4t. And those are already independent, so no need to modify them. So there you have your six independent solutions, and together their linear combinations form the general solution. So, okay, so that's pretty much the idea with higher order homogeneous equations. Um, that's it for this video.